Hello, Ragers, and welcome back to another episode of Rage It. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Petty Revenge. So minor, but so gratifying. This afternoon, we drove from one small town to another to go to the grocery store, supermarket. About a third of the way there, we got stuck behind a car going way below the speed limit. And typically, it was in spots we couldn't overtake. 100 kilometers an hour, they were doing 80. 80 kilometer an hour limit, they were doing 60. Extremely annoying. So, we get into town to go to the grocery store. We're right near the entrance. Blinkers on to turn left. They are in front of us, ready to go forward, and suddenly, they just hard left into the car park. No blinkers, forcing us to slam on the brakes with baby in the back. Needless to say, me and my significant other who was driving are extremely pissed after being stuck behind them for 10 minutes. I watched them park up while we were and get out of the car. I identified them while we unloaded little one and put her in her stroller. I said to significant other, every chance I get in the store, I'm stopping in front of them with the shopping cart hard. I got three opportunities to get in their way and by golly, I took them, just meandering through the aisles very slowly, veering one side to the other, stopping suddenly in front of them and not noticing when they were trying to get past. So satisfying that I did not feel one ounce of guilt. This is a pet peeve for me, even like when walking, like if I'm in the mall and there's a group of people in front of me walking and they're walking so slow and just going across the whole aisle so it's impossible to get by them, it's the most annoying thing ever. For a bit of background, my first marriage ended badly. He was emotionally abusive and took it to a physical level twice. He then did all he could to stall the divorce. It took me five years to get my divorce. A couple of years after it ended, my former sister-in-law was working at a big store that rhymes with tall fart. My mom was going to have a barbecue, and I was buying a couple bottles of Arbor Mist. Don't judge me, I love that stuff. Well, I was going through self-checkout since all the lanes were packed. Small town, this big store was really the only place to shop. Apparently, my former sister-in-law was running the self-checkout and decided that, due to our history, she couldn't be the one to check my ID. I noticed her talking to another employee who came over to allow us to continue checking out, as a machine won't allow you to continue unless someone enters a code verifying that I was old enough to make the purchase. The next day, I got an email from my ex-husband I think it's about time we got this divorce finalized so you can buy alcohol on your own. This made me feel very uncomfortable. I didn't like him knowing what I purchased. The years of emotional abuse left me not wanting anything to do with him, and I didn't feel like he had a right to know anything about my life. I emailed the store with my complaint, explaining that my ex had spent years tearing me down and trying to break me, and I felt like my ex was using the knowledge of my purchases to harass me and to let me know that he still knew what I was doing and who I was with. I said that I felt it was inappropriate for my former sister-in-law to be informing him of what I bought. She got fired. Yeah, not gonna lie, definitely not a good idea to use your position in a company to help someone else harass and stalk somebody. Good thing she was fired for this. I live in a small European county where public transport is the easiest and most convenient option to get from A to B. The trams in my city have a variety of seats. Single seats, seats for two, and seats for four. Two seats facing each other. I've noticed that in the past few years, people have come up with the most annoying habit to sit on the seat on the aisle seat and leave the window seat free. This always annoys me, especially when the opposite two seats are occupied. So when you want to sit, you have to climb over people. Last week, during rush hour, 
I entered a tram and there was only one seat left. It was a window seat, of course, but it wasn't really free. The guy on the aisle seat had his backpack on the seat next to him. People have their stuff on the seats all the time, but usually move it when the tram starts to get full. Every decent person would do that, right? Well, not this guy. So I walked up to him, looked at him with my most judgmental expression. My coworkers tell me all the time that I'm extremely good at making them feel guilty by just looking at them. But it didn't work with this guy. He chose to ignore me. Usually, I don't have a problem with telling people how stupid they are, but I didn't say anything. I'm not sure why. I just stood there, blocking the aisle and staring at him. Two stops after I got in, he wanted to get out. Now, I was still there, in the aisle and blocking it. He grabbed his backpack, stood up, and looked at me. I noticed it and chose to ignore him. A few seconds of him staring at me and me ignoring him passed before he said, uh, excuse me? And I moved so he could pass. The thing is, the tram doesn't stop for very long. Usually, especially during rush hour, people will make their way to the doors even before the tram stops. But this guy didn't. I can only guess he wanted to have his backpack enjoy the experience of blocking a seat until the very last moment. He only got up after the tram stopped and then had to have me excuse him. So that when he arrived at the doors, they were already locked. I tried to keep my grin at a decent level when I took the seat at the window. I get it. I'm as antisocial as anybody else out there. But you have to have common courtesy. I live in New York City, and I work kind of late. To get home, I take the local train three stops, then transfer to the express. I got on the local train one evening and felt a bad fart brewing. The train car was almost empty, but I figured I'd wait until I got off the local and let it out on the platform where I transfer, because I felt like it was going to be a bad fart. At the next stop, some guy got on and sat down next to me. No, not next to me. Practically in my freaking lap. Out of the dozens of seats available to him, he sat right next to me. So, I let him have it. I let that fart out and I felt my ass cheeks ripple against the plastic seat with the force of my wind. He knew. I knew. People sitting on the other side of the car knew. I wish I had the ability to fart at will, like a squid inking. Man, I don't care how old I am. When I'm a hundred years old, fart jokes and farting is still going to be funny. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, smash that like and subscribe button. If not, let me know why down in the comments. Also, if there's other videos that you guys want me to make, let me know. I'm more than happy to make other videos for you guys. See you guys all tomorrow.